Radical Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, I, I've got to give her credit. She's trying to do something clever. She's trying to it. It's totally dishonest. It's completely disgusting. It's also totally predictable, but it is clever, which is she is trying to very casually abandon the completely extreme and delusional elements that she previously associated with or still did, still does, as far as we know, including the QAnon stuff and the most extreme elements of MAGA and just sort of say, ah, you know, I kind of got sucked into stuff, but like I voted for Kevin McCarthy. Now I'm in. I'm part of the Republican establishment and I'm going to be on committees and it's all going to be great. And the reason she is doing this is exactly what I just said. She doesn't want to be the extreme cartoon anymore. She wants to be taken seriously as a committee member in good standing right up there with Kevin McCarthy, with the Speaker of the House and uh, um, adjacent to power. Part of this rewriting of history started in an interview on Fox News over the weekend, where when Howard Kurtz asked her about some of her previous you know, associations, affiliations, et cetera, she basically just writes it off and says, oh, you know, I got sucked into some stuff on the Internet. Yeah. And well, just, just to deal with one bit of history, the Democrats stripped you of your committee assignments after you right. were elected. That was raw politics. Mm -hmm. But in fairness, didn't you also say around that period that you had been a follower of QAnon conspiracy theories and you had rethought this and you were no longer uh, influenced by the group? Well, like a lot of people today, I had easily gotten sucked into some things I'd seen on the internet, um, but that was dealt with quickly early on. I never campaigned on those things. Oh. That was not something I believed in. That's mm -hmm. not what I ran for Congress on. So those are so far in the past. All right. um, you tweeted, this is a bold faced attempt or a bald face attempt. I go with both. I like both um, to try to excuse and eliminate and remove her record, which includes she said crazy anti-Semitic things. Um, she was arguing that the Trump riders from January 6 should just be released, that they're political prisoners, that they are they're martyrs of some kind. Um, she taunted a kid who was traumatized by gun violence. She went to an event um, organized by and at which white supremacist Nick Fuentes spoke and then said, I don't know anything about it. She accused Nancy Pelosi of treason, Jewish space lasers, on and on and on and on and on. And now she wants to go, ah, I saw some stuff on the internet. A lot of people, it happens to a lot of people, but I didn't run on that stuff. I didn't run on that stuff. The reason she's doing it is that now that they're in power, she needs a different image. Support the speaker, get onto committees, be taken seriously as a stateswoman of some kind. The problem is you shouldn't be able to, and hopefully she won't be able to, just write off uh, entire swaths of her history. Another clip I'm going to play for you. Um, Howard Kurtz says, you know, a lot of the people backing McCarthy didn't want to certify the election. Is that still important to the base? And she goes, absolutely. Election denialism, she says, is now mainstream Republican Party. Let's do that. When things got heated, you said this about Congressman Chip Roy of Texas. He refused to object on January 6th. That's not what our base wanted. So a lot of the people who were backing Kevin McCarthy uh, also didn't vote to certify the Electoral College results for Joe Biden. Um, do you think that's an important thing to the base even today? Oh, it's very important. Oh. Well, what I was pointing out is the wow. same people that conservatives were holding up in high esteem don't necessarily have those voting records while they're at the same time criticizing Kevin McCarthy, who does. Right. Kevin McCarthy did object on January 6th, and he's been a top target of the Democrats and the January 6th so committee. So do you believe that Joe Biden is a legitimately elected president? Of course Joe Biden's the president. That's always a silly question. Okay, I wasn't trying to be silly. I was trying to... Well, she didn't answer the question. The question was, is he a legitimately elected president? And she says, of course, he's the president. So even though she is trying really hard to distance from QAnon and distance from the conspiracy theories and whatever, when it came down to it right there, she answered about Biden being a legitimate president the way they love doing it, which is by saying he is the president, which is a total cop out. And she insists that now election denialism is part of the base of the Republican Party. Is it a big enough base for them to win in 24? We don't know. OK, one more clip from this completely deranged interview. Uh, she says that a lot of the holdouts from the speaker vote just wanted attention, which 
when I think of Congress people who want attention, my mind first goes to Marjorie Taylor Greene, but now she says others wanted attention. Most important thing that every single member has is their voting card. There's only 222 Republicans and we need 218 to pass anything. That's where the magic happens. And so the big fight that happened this week, I think that a lot of it was really unnecessary and and just a bunch of fanfare that helps popularity on the internet, but doesn't (laughs) produce results. Now we have a speaker that we can produce results with, and we have to do that by coming together to get 218. That's where our power lies. And so with this rules package, let's be very real. We've got a Biden White House, we have a Democrat-controlled Senate, Mm -hmm. and we got to get to 218 to accomplish anything. Right. Ultimately, Washington, it's about the math. They just wanted attention. It was because they wanted to get popular on the Internet, which is the epitome of Marjorie Taylor Greene. So let's go back to the beginning. It's dishonest. It's absurd. It's pathetic what she's doing, but it just might work. She really might be able to rewrite and remake her image now that they are in control. And that's a very scary thing to think about.